quite frankly, it's kind of unusual. It's quite, quite Franklin. Quite fr- <laughs> Got it. Quite Franklin. How do you start dealing with the body breaking down? Because, yeah. I mean, what, I'm 26, turning 27 soon? Birthday party? Ah, ah okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, but my hips, everything, obviously I have a handicap, but nevertheless, I'm in my 20s and that's already started. Yeah. So 40s got to be different. Well, it's, you know, people always say that like, oh, it's, I'm in my 20s and it's already started. And that's not, that's not a, a, like an uncommon statement, you know, because you're going to start having injuries. Every injury that I ever had, whether probably one of the worst injuries I had was uh, twisting my ankle really badly in high school. I was running up some stairs and I, I stepped on a stair and when it, it slipped off the stair and hit the stair below it and my ankle stuck sideways, like I tore all the ligaments in my ankle. And you can look at my left ankle now. Now, since that injury, I've probably twisted and torn ligaments. I tore ligaments in several of my lower level professional fights, tore ligaments, I tore ligaments in the David Loazzo fight, kicking him. Like I couldn't walk on my foot. And so these things tend to catch up with you. And by the time I hit my late twenties, early thirties, like, yeah, my ankle was hurting. All things considered, my body is in pretty decent shape at the age of 40. But nonetheless, every little bump and bruise that I ever felt in my entire life is still there. So managing that stuff as you get older is more and more difficult. Because when I get out of bed, obviously, uh, when I was 25, I'd get out of bed and I'd jump out of bed like, Woo, let's go do some road work <laughs> right away. Well, it's it's not that simple at 40. Like I get up now right. and I'm like, oh, man, like hold on a second. Like let me bend <laughs> these knees. Let me, let me like loosen my back up. Right. And once I get myself moving... I can move like I moved when I'm 25, like reflexes, speed, all that stuff is still there. Like I haven't lost those things yet. Maybe a little bit, but not like a noticeable difference, so to speak. And, but like when I was 25, it was like warm up sets. Who needs those in the gym? And so now it's, it's all about pacing and, and the key, the key, the key to all this is recovery time. And I've, you know, I've said this from day one. You, you, you have athletes that'll talk about, oh, you know, I, I'll go back to the gym. I train harder than anybody else. It's like, well, that's great. I mean, every athlete trains hard, but what are you doing to separate yourself from all the other athletes in the world? And I heard um, Khabib the other day talking, and when he talked about recovery, he's like, if you want to sum up recovery in one word, and I've been saying this since the beginning of my career, sleep. It, it, that is the key. So, you know, he talked about in his career and I used to do the same thing, get up in the morning, hit my morning routine, you you know, like my, my morning training session. When I was done with my morning training session, come home, take a nap. Why? Because my body needs to recover from all that abuse that it's been through. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that to myself again that night. And then when I'm done training at night, what do I do? Go to bed, make sure that I'm getting plenty of sleep. I'm not out late partying and drinking and doing all those kinds of things. Um, I'm making sure that I sleep. And so that sleep is key. Now, obviously, for someone who's talking about maintaining fitness in their 40s, people don't live the life where they can just like get up, go to the gym, come home, take a nap, and then go to work. Like, obviously, obviously not (laughs) realistic, right? But the, the, you know, the key to all this is making sure that you recover properly. So going back to the original question that we had is like, how do I make like setting up a fitness routine at the, at the age of 40? I mean, you're, this is something that if you have no clue what you're doing, you're going to have to work with somebody that does. And then you're going to have to have realistic expectations. If you've never done any kind of fitness, then, you know, what I would recommend is I, like, Number one is your resistance training. I'm a big believer in resistance training. I believe that resistance training is more important than cardiovascular training. It it will help with heart rate. You can obviously alter the amount of resistance that you're doing, uh, sure. whether you're doing like uh, volume sets, high reps, things like that, that will actually get your heart rate up. But at the same time, like resistance, there's tons of studies on how it helps with bone density. And it's it's those bones, it's those muscles and everything that has to carry you the rest of your life. So in any given week, I have... My routine looks something like this. Like I'll typically grapple on Mondays and Wednesdays. I will lift on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, I'll go in and do uh, some bag work, mitt work, something on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then maybe on a Saturday, I'll do like just a little bit of auxiliary cardio. If I start running a week where like I'm traveling, for example, or things start to get a little hairy where I, I, I don't have the time to get everything in that I need to get in, then I will, the, the last thing that gets cut is my lifting routine. Like I always make sure that I lift. And what I tell people with their fitness, particularly as you age, because remember we're, we're working on longevity here and, and it is important to pick weight. Like resistance training is, is that is like, don't be afraid male or female. Don't be afraid to pick something up. That's heavy where you say like, Oh my God, this is so heavy. 
like actually putting real strain on the body. It's important for things like bone density. And, um, you know, I always tell people this, like if I wanted to get in shape to run a 5k or a 10k or a, or a half a marathon, I might spend the next mm, two months getting ready for that. Like essentially that's what I would do when I was getting ready for a fight. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not in fight shape right now, but if I wanted to get in the cardiovascular shape that I needed to be in for a fight, it would take me roughly two months. But if I wanted to put on say five pounds of muscle, like that's a year plus investment, right? It takes so much longer to sure. alter your body if you're putting on muscle mass as opposed to just being able to drop my heart rate a certain number of beats in a 60 second rest period, for example. So for me, for me, if I'm setting up a, a fitness routine or if you're setting up a fitness routine over the age of 40, the first thing I would put in is your resistance training. Find something, lift three days a week, a typical body split, keep it nice and easy. You, I'm doing lower body legs one day. Then, uh, the, then I'm doing all my pull motions. So anything like back and buys and anything where I'm pulling. And then on the third day I do all my pushing motions, you know, things like bench presses, shoulder presses, triceps, those, those muscles and just keep, keep an easy split. You don't need to overcomplicate it. You don't, you don't need to read these muscle and fitness magazines where you're, you know, I'm going to do neck and quads on one day and then hamstrings and calves on the next. Like it doesn't, doesn't need to be that, that, that complicated. If you're, right. if we're talking general fitness, I'm not talking about the athlete who's prepping for a specific event here, but just for general fitness purposes, keep it simple, you know, legs day, pull day and push day. And then you know, beyond that, the, the scope of this particular session is not, teaching people how to you know set up those individual workouts like there needs to be some sure i'm assuming that the sure. listeners have some level of competency when it comes to that so to speak yeah i mean i think the biggest question i would have with that because people forget that to look like you it's a lot less on the fitness regimen and a lot more discipline with what you put in your body oh absolutely and Talk a little bit on that. Like, how does that look to complement your exercise? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So nutrition, I, uh, nutrition is one of those things I work out. So I work out seven times a week, eight times a week. I don't know. I don't know if you want to count my grab, like maybe nine times a week, but I eat, I eat like, <laughs> I eat like 42 times a week. Right. Because I'm because I'm eating five to six meals a day. And so I always tell people that that's how much more important your nutrition is <clears throat> than your your actual fitness routine. How many so, calories does that come to? For, uh, I, I eat north of four thousand calories a day. I have to. OK, my right. I have like I have skinny jeans. Like, so if I'm not hitting my calorie intake, then I'll lose weight, particularly with my physical output, particularly at this age. Like it's the older you get, the more difficult it is to maintain muscle mass. Right. So I have to make sure that I eat 4,200 calories. Now I will say this also, and this isn't something I've done a ton of talking about publicly just cause the, the subjects never come up, but like I started doing my hormone re regimen, like hormone therapy, oh, okay. uh, around the age of 41, it was post career when I started doing that. And you know, this is a, a big topic of discussion, but I'm a firm believer. Uh, it, like everything is connected to hormones. Sickness is connected to hormones, fatigue, everything's connected to hormones. Even the way you metabolize food, the way you recover from workouts, this is all about hormones which is why sleep is very important because anything from stress to, to sleep to whatever, it, all these things can affect your hormone levels. So, you know, managing a healthy hormone profile, uh, making sure I'm getting plenty of sleep and rest, which we talked about. Uh, nutrition is obviously key. And then really last is what I do with my body, the actual, the actual physical workouts. So w we live in this society where people want this instant gratification. They think like, oh, well, I can just go in the gym and I can lift a little bit of weights and run on the treadmill and everything will be fine and I can continue eating. It doesn't work like that? No, no, no. You, you know, <laughs> like while, while you while you simultaneously continue eating your cheesecake and your and your pizzas and, and drinking your beer and burgers and you're like, what? why am I not, especially as you age, right, as in your 40s? Right. Because when I was, when I was, training when I was younger, I would do these epic cheat meals and anybody that knows me knows about the cheat meals that I used to do. And really what it is, is it's, it's a weekly refeed, but I was doing it with, with junky food. And now my system, it won't tolerate that junky food. I'm so used to eating clean. It's the lifestyle that I've just lived ever since I was in high school that the moment that I decide to sit down and eat some pizza or have it like an excess amount of grease or anything like that, yeah. particularly when, when you're going out to restaurants and they're cooking and things like seed oils and canola oils that my body's not used to, my system just completely rejects it. So, you know, 
the, f- the first thing I always tell people is like, you know, we're talking about fitness, like fitness over 40. First thing, like stress management. And I would say stress management and sleep are, are the two key ingredients there. And then that's followed by nutrition, which obviously the, all these things affect hormone profiles. And then the last thing, the last pillar of that is actually your actual fitness, what you do with your body, whether you're running or lifting or whatever it is that you're doing with your mm. body. And, and it's all about that. And if you're going to try to do one of those things and not the other, then it won't work. And for, for me, uh, obviously like nutrition is a full-time job. I can go to the gym for an hour and I can work out with intensity hour, hour and a half, like extreme intensity. I did a leg workout yesterday and I mean, you see me walking down the stairs, I'm, right. I'm hobbling down the <laughs> stairs. Right. But that's, you know, that's an hour and a half of my day. The right. other 16 waking hours is centered around all the, my nutrition and making sure that I'm maintaining that. And so if I let one of those things slip all the way down to, you know, what I'm eating, uh, the hormone therapy that I do, uh, my fitness routine, like if I let any of those things slip, I won't be able to maintain not just the way that I look like people obviously look at you and they can tell that you're in shape, but right. it's the performance aspect of it as well, which yeah. is from my perspective, why I haven't like you haven't seen this drop off. Like if you you've you've seen me train and mm-hmm. so my my speed, my reflexes, my timing, like that stuff doesn't look much different than it did when I was in the peak of my career. Yeah. Probably slight differences, but not these extreme noticeable differences that you would see from a drop off because this is not for me, just being a professional athlete wasn't a job. It was just part of this lifestyle that I've had ever right. since I was a young kid because I've played sports my entire life. So not everybody does have that exercise experience. Just for a one punch home. I'm forty years old in this scenario. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Starting out, give me one piece of advice to build my day. Well, okay, so I'm sure in other podcasts we're going to talk about routines. They're yep. important to you. They're important to me. And the first thing you're going to want to do is create a routine. And whatever that routine is, and, and my routine is all about m- my lifestyle. You know, I have this mind-body-soul connection right. in my routine. But when we're talking about the body, there's obviously the nutrition side. But just if you've never done anything fitness, it's like get started with something basic. Some air squats, some push-ups, some pull-ups. And you can pretty much work your three major muscle groups that way, right? If you – there are ways to – for example, if you can't do regular push-ups, then you do push-ups on your knees. And if push-ups are easy to you, grab a tactical backpack, fill it with some water bottles or some rice or something, make it heavier. Same thing with with pull-ups. If you're if pull-ups to you are easy, then you can throw a tactical backpack on, make it a little bit harder. If they're if they're difficult to you, there are straps that you can wrap around the pull-up bar to assist. Yep. You can do them. You can do body pull-ups where you can get assistance. So there are ways to adjust these things so that even the beginner can use these basic exercises and create create a routine just with some some basic resistance, something that'll make you strain. You know, I can I can pick this water bottle up right here and I can I can press this and. Technically, I'm working my shoulder out, but I can probably do this 500 times if I wanted to. So what resistance is this truly giving me? Like you really want to put some resistance in there. So that's the first thing I would do. Create that routine. You're going to get up in the morning, do what, you know, create what that is, whatever level you're at and just say, okay, when I get up this morning, I'm going to do X number of squats, Y number of pull-ups and Z number of push-ups. And whether you break that down in sets of 10, 20, 30 or whatever, and just do something that takes you like 30 minutes to get started and do that like three times that week and then up the numbers you know and up the numbers up the numbers until you get to a point where you have where you have some knowledge of what you're doing and then you can start branching out from there if you want to go to a gym or whatever just starting basic you can you can always do something and you don't have to the key to this to anything that you're doing is like it doesn't have to be this monster workout yeah even if you just say tomorrow i'm going to start and you wake up and you're not motivated get up do your 25 squats, your 10 push-ups, and 10 pull-ups. And if that only takes you four minutes to get done, then so be it. You at least started with something. And That's just it, continue, continue building from there. It's a scaffolding thing. So, look, Kiss it, right? Kiss it, yeah, exactly. Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it simple, silly, stupid. Yeah, no. Listen, we'll, we'll. I'm sure on these 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 podcasts because I mean you're you're an avid trainer too, and you know so we'll get into setting up routines. Um, you know, you know, nutrition, my nutrition protocols, you know, my morning routines, all this. Like, we'll eventually get into all these things more in depth. This is just more kind of a, uh, as an overview to answer some of the questions that we've had coming in on socials. Sweet man, cool. I love it. Awesome. 
Quite Franklin is providing this podcast as a public service, but it is neither a legal interpretation nor legal advice, nor a statement of Quite Franklin policy. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation of that product or entity by Rich Franklin or Quite Franklin. The views expressed by guests on the podcast are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by Quite Franklin employees or representatives are the views and opinions of the persons expressing them, and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Quite Franklin or any of its officials or principals. Nothing heard on this podcast at any time is medical advice or is intended as medical advice. The listener must always consult his or her personal physician or other qualified medical professional regarding any questions of a medical nature. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact our general counsel.